This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the best all-in-one platform for any of your website building needs. Hey guys, it's Celestia, and today we're going to be talking about vent art. It's something I discussed to a lesser degree in a previous video linked in the iCard above, but while I went over the primary controversies surrounding it and briefly addressed them, I've still received requests since then to talk about it in more detail in its own dedicated video. And that isn't all that surprising, honestly, because not only is there more to it than could have been thoroughly summarized by that section of that video, there's also a lot more stigma and discourse surrounding it now than there was when I made it. I think that's at least in some part due to it being embraced and normalized by popular platforms like TikTok, leading its existence to become known by a wider, more mainstream audience. And while this normalization is far from a bad thing, it's led me to personally see many, many more artists expressing anxieties about it. I've seen more tweets and comments than I'd like to admit from artists saying they're afraid to post their vent art anywhere, even though they want to, because they're worried about being accused of glorifying or romanticizing mental illness. And it's become abundantly clear that the stigma surrounding vent art is doing legitimate harm to the artists creating it. As such, I thought it was time to finally make that dedicated video about it. So today, we're going to go over what vent art is, its validity and importance as a therapeutic practice, whether or not it should be posted online, and whether or not it romanticizes or glorifies mental illness. But before we start unpacking all that, let me take a moment to thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is both a longtime supporter of this channel and a website building and hosting platform that I swear by as someone who uses them to host both my art studio website and my personal portfolio. And just by looking at those, you can see that their gallery options easily and flexibly let you make a beautiful portfolio, no matter what kind of work you're displaying or how you want to display it. But to mix things up, last time I brought you a new example of how versatile their tools are. Cheddar. The Experience, a website proudly devoted to sharing my dumb cat with the world. This week, I'm keeping up the theme with Mink, The Experience, another website about a cat that I inexplicably decided to actually sit down and create, but this time about my wife's cat. You, a reasonable human being, could use Squarespace's gallery functions and automatic image scaling to create a beautiful portfolio with work that's automatically scaled down and resized to suit your needs with no extra effort needed. I, an agent of chaos in need of serious help, made a gallery of photos of this dumb little cryptid man for your viewing pleasure. Look at him. Who is he? Well, his exceptional biography section will tell you just that. And with Squarespace's members-only content creation options, I could even let you read exclusive blogs from him to learn yet more about this mysterious creature for a small fee of $800. And on the topic of very reasonably priced things, Squarespace's e-commerce and print-on-demand integration have even allowed my man Mink to sell his own merch, something you could do for your art too. You get the point. Just like I said last time, if I can make a site for my cat look this good on Squarespace, you can make yours look even better, no matter what you need it for. Thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring this video, and please go check out squarespace.com now to get a free trial to build a site that you're truly proud of. And once you have, go to squarespace.com slash duchesscelestia to get 10% off your first domain purchase. Anyway, all that out of the way, let's get into the video. First of all, what is vent art? If you're not familiar, vent art is effectively any art created with the intention of expressing and venting an emotion or experience, hence the name. Some restrict this definition to only refer to art that's created during professionally led therapy to work through trauma and negative emotions. And while that obviously is one form of it, the term has gradually expanded to simply include any work that's made in any setting with the intention of venting something. So long as its creation was prompted by a desire to express and work through an emotion or experience, it falls into the category of vent art. Furthermore, that means that it's not just negative emotions or experiences being depicted that qualify as vent art, but also positive emotions and experiences. I've made vent art to express the healing catharsis of coming out as a lesbian, the passion and excitement of getting out of a small-minded small town and moving to a big city to see the world and find my place in it, and much more. That said, while that does qualify as vent art, it is the minority for most. It's much more common to see vent art expressing more negative themes. And it's because of the depiction of those negative themes that it faces so much scrutiny and controversy. Not because vent art itself is bad for including these depictions, but because people take issue with it being posted despite those depictions. Whether they personally like it or find it helpful themselves or not, most everyone acknowledges that on its own, vent art is a productive, healing, therapeutic outlet for the artist creating it. And while you might see some people expressing a lack of understanding of how exactly it's helpful, 
you'll rarely find anyone taking issue with the creation of vent art itself. Its validity is widely accepted, even amongst those who don't personally understand or partake in it, and it only becomes controversial when the artist's right to post and share it is brought into question. And while there are quite a few different arguments against the posting of vent art, I'll be focusing on the three that I see most frequently. That posting vent art contributes to the romanticization and glorification of mental illness, that posting vent art risks triggering those who view it, and that sharing it in a capacity that allows the artist to profit from it is wrong because it effectively allows them to profit off of mental illness. Obviously, since these arguments are based on subjective opinions, I won't be able to make any objective conclusions about whether or not any of them are correct or not, but I will be going over each one in more detail, discussing both the strengths and weaknesses of them with as little bias as possible, and providing and explaining my own opinions and conclusions on why none of them should actually dissuade artists from posting their vent art. But before I do, I want to discuss one core belief that all three arguments hinge upon, that the posting of vent art is not necessary for the artist creating it to derive therapeutic value from it. Everyone arguing about the posting of vent art, to some extent, believes that it's only the creation process that has therapeutic value, and that nothing helpful or healing can be gained from them posting it afterwards. They argue that, since, to them, sharing that art isn't necessary, the only reasons that artists could have to do so anyway is to seek attention, clout, or profit. And I'd like to quash that right now because there is absolutely no basis for this claim. It takes a lot of arrogance to confidently assert that you know what is and isn't helpful, healing, and therapeutic for every human being. And it's some very unfounded arrogance because that's impossible. It's both incorrect and ignorant for anyone to claim that they know posting vent art is unnecessary and unhelpful for the artist creating it because they do not have the knowledge or authority to tell anyone else how to heal from their feelings or traumas. One of the biggest arguments these people use to back up these claims is that in a professional setting, when done with a therapist, the creation of vent art actually follows some fairly strict rules, one of which is that it is never shown to anyone other than the artist and the therapist. In fact, it's frequently destroyed after being made or kept in the artist's patient file and nowhere else. The most glaringly obvious reason that this being used as a justification to claim that vent art should never be posted is stupid is that, as I already mentioned, vent art is a term that is no longer just limited to art created under the direction of a therapist. It's a term that refers to all art created to vent something, so to govern what should be done with all of it post-creation based on rules that only apply to one type of it is ridiculous. But more than that, it's also assuming that the reason that, in a professional, therapist-led setting, vent art is kept completely private is that it being shared would be harmful. I have personally created vent art in sessions with a therapist on many occasions, and it was always up to me whether or not it was kept private. The quote-unquote rule was only that the therapist would not share it with anyone without my permission and that any sharing of the art would be done at my own discretion. The reason vent art in this setting is kept private is not because sharing it would be harmful to others, but rather to protect the patient slash artist from feeling influenced in any capacity by the concern that it would be shared without their knowledge or permission. The point is to make sure they don't feel like they have to censor themselves, worry about making it good, worry about what anyone else will think about it, and so on. It being private is exclusively to make sure that the creation process itself is as therapeutic and safe as possible. What's done with it after the creation process is not relevant. So not only do the rules for vent art in this very specific circumstance not apply to vent art in other circumstances, they're being deliberately misinterpreted to suit the narrative that the sharing of vent art is professionally deemed to be harmful, which it isn't. So, with all of that in mind, there is absolutely no excusable reason to claim that posting vent art is objectively, empirically unnecessary or unhelpful when it comes to the therapeutic aspect of it, especially given that sharing it with others can even be imperative for some artists to find it healing at all. Yes, some artists would much rather create it in private and never show it to anyone. But others find immense value in posting it so that they can connect with other people who have gone through similar experiences and felt similar feelings, allowing them to find a sense of validation and community through this work. Of course, there are some artists who do post vent art solely because they want attention, followers, or clout, but they are the exception and not the rule. Most artists who share this work do so primarily because they find some kind of therapeutic value in doing so, and because sharing their feelings with others who feel the same helps them. It can even help to bring awareness and understanding to things like mental illness by providing a visual representation of how it can feel to suffer from it. The vast majority of artists posting vent art are doing so with positive intentions because it's an integral part of the healing process that it offers for them, and they should not be lumped in with the much smaller minority that are posting it with negative intentions and just 
judged as a result. Now that that particular misconception has been dispelled and we've established that there's no justification for claiming that it's always unnecessary to post fan art, let's move on to the three previously mentioned arguments that people use to claim that it's harmful to post it. First, the argument that posting and sharing vent art is effectively romanticizing mental illness or other unhealthy, negative subject matter that it might depict. The most common instance in which this argument is used is in the case of vent art that depicts self harm, which is one of the most commonly seen themes in vent art, as a great many people view that art as glorifying it, making it look appealing, and even encouraging it. People making this argument tend to view vent art as something that reduces mental illness and self harm to an aesthetic. And in fairness, sometimes it does. Sometimes art is made with the intention of glamorizing the worst parts of mental illness and making it look quirky or tragically beautiful or edgy or whatever else. But what people making this argument don't understand is that that art, that's not vent art. That's not art made to vent an emotion or an experience. That's art made to exploit an emotion or experience. And those are two very different things. What makes the argument understandable is that to an outsider looking in, it can be difficult if not altogether impossible to distinguish the artist's intentions by looking at their work alone. An artist who is making vent art with the intention of expressing themselves, and an artist who's drawing a character hurting themselves because they think it's edgy and cool, could make the exact same piece. And because you can't know an artist's intentions or motivations just by looking at that piece, it's impossible to say which one is vent art and which one isn't. So when people make this argument, I can't totally blame them. Because sometimes they might be right. Sometimes the art they're talking about is romanticizing mental illness. And sometimes it's perfectly valid, well-meaning vent art. So I can completely understand the frustration that fuels this argument's prevalence, and I'll admit to having felt it myself sometimes. But ultimately, in my opinion, if we have no way of knowing for sure if a piece of art is vent art or just romanticizing dark subject matter, but we do know that the vast majority of it probably is vent art that's just being shared with positive intentions, it's much fairer and more reasonable to simply treat all of it as if it is vent art. Because really, we have two options if we can't tell them apart. Demonize all vent art and tell artists not to post it just because there are a few assholes using it as a trend or an aesthetic. Or accept all vent art as valid and risk enabling a few assholes using it as a trend or an aesthetic, while also validating and supporting artists just trying to work through their problems. And I think the second option does much less harm. I just don't see how assuming all vent art is glorifying dark topics just by depicting them is productive, because that's very much not the case. Depiction is not automatically endorsement. Drawing a character with self-harm scars because you're struggling with self-harm yourself does not mean you're saying it's a good thing. It means you're acknowledging that it's a part of your life and your mental health, and that it affects you enough that you need to express it. It can help you connect with other people that are also struggling with it. It can help others who aren't struggling with it understand how difficult it is and what it's like. It can help you get out the feelings that you might otherwise have turned to worse coping mechanisms to handle. And it does not mean you're encouraging others to turn to those worse coping mechanisms just because you drew art of them. If anything, most vent art depicting those things is usually depicting them as being bad and painful and horrible, because that's how the artist is experiencing them, and because that's how they are. There are, in fairness, some instances in which it's clear through the art itself that it is endorsing what it's depicting, and that's usually in cases where there's a narrative. It can be borderline impossible to tell whether a single illustration is just depicting something as the artist experiences it, or glorifying that experience, because there's just not enough contextual information available. But in cases of comics, animations, and written stories, it can be much clearer, because the narrative involved will usually, to some extent, communicate the artist's intentions in making that work and the way they want the viewer or reader to perceive what's being depicted. In these cases, I think the argument does have more credence, but at the absolute most, I think that means that we should just be very conscious and critical of these works so that we can come to our own conclusions as to whether or not that is the case in each instance. Not just look at every instance as if it is automatically glorification by default. The next argument levied against the posting of vent art is that it has the potential to trigger and upset those who view it, and that the artists who create it have a responsibility to protect those viewers from that. Those who make this argument believe that public online spaces should be free from content that has the potential to exacerbate the mental illness of those within it. And the sentiment behind that is completely understandable too. 
As someone who struggles with a lot of things that Ventart frequently depicts, I have come across Ventart on multiple occasions and been triggered by it, struggling more with those things as a direct result of having seen it and been reminded of it. And while yes, it would have been nice to not have that come across my Twitter feed out of nowhere, I don't believe that it's the artist's fault that I responded that way, or that they shouldn't have posted it publicly because people like me were liable to respond that way. I don't think that people making this argument are ill-intentioned by any means. There's nothing blameworthy about not wanting fragile people, themselves potentially included, to be hurt by what Ventart depicts. But I don't personally believe it to be the artist's responsibility to protect them from that response. Because ultimately, it is the internet and it's the viewer's responsibility to curate their own online experience. If your mental health is fragile enough to be damaged by triggering content on Twitter, the solution isn't to expect triggering content to not be there. It's to not go on Twitter. Yes, the vent art I saw did trigger me, but I chose to browse a platform that had the potential to trigger me because I knew that I could handle being a little triggered well enough to be able to keep scrolling. If I thought I couldn't, I wouldn't have put myself in a position to encounter it. An artist can't be, in my opinion, held responsible for the way that their work is interpreted by others, and suggesting that any work, vent art or otherwise, that might upset viewers shouldn't be posted at all would do a severe disservice to the art world altogether. Some art is meant to be thought-provoking, upsetting, disturbing, controversial, and so on. And to say that that art shouldn't be shared eliminates the potential for that art to spark important conversations, spread awareness, and be appreciated. Personally, I do think it's at least respectful and kind to include trigger warnings when posting vent art, and I think it's even more respectful to post it primarily to spaces that are designed for the sharing of art like that, rather than in wider reaching communities. But even then, I don't think those things should be mandatory. I don't think artists who don't do that should be demonized or told not to share their work. I just think it's more respectful to their audience to at least take their comfort into consideration in the process of sharing it. But again, that's up to the artist and what they find important. Finally, the last most common argument against the posting of vent art is, as I mentioned, presented in the specific instance of artists posting it in a way that allows them to make money off of it one way or another be it by selling it directly or posting it in a manner that allows the accumulation of revenue in some way, like a comic with ads or an animation on a monetized channel. The first belief that motivates this argument is that it's wrong to profit off of the glorification of mental illness or dark themes. And that doesn't require much further discussion because we've already talked about the fact that true vent art doesn't glorify mental illness or dark themes, it just depicts them. The second belief that motivates this argument is that if an artist is profiting off of vent art, then they didn't really create it for the sake of venting, but rather for the sake of profit. And if that's the case, then they're cheapening the validity of vent art and exploiting the practice to make money from it. To an extent, I understand where this is coming from, because if an artist is creating vent art with the primary motivation of making money from it, there is absolutely an argument to be made that that no longer even qualifies as vent art, because the intention isn't to vent, it's to use dark topics to profit. But just like you can't tell by looking at it if the artist's intention is to glorify what they're drawing, you can't tell by looking at it if the artist's intention is to make it profitable. So to treat all vent art that is generating revenue as if it was created for that purpose is unfair and ignorant. Because in most cases, vent art that is sold or made to be profitable in any capacity is not created with that purpose in mind. It's created to vent emotions and experiences, and then after that creation, it's sold or otherwise monetized. And what's done with art after its creation, so long as what's going to be done with it isn't the reason for its creation, is completely irrelevant to the meaning of it. If you use art, to work through your trauma and then decide that you like the piece that came from it and want to sell it, that doesn't suddenly take away the reason you made it or the meaning behind it, and it doesn't devalue it or make you some kind of sellout. Artists have every right to profit off of work that they pour their heart and soul into, and suggesting otherwise seems to me like just another example of society's commonly accepted but also ignorant and harmful ideology that artists should do it for the art, not the money. And they're not real artists if they charge for it. Like, look at poetry. Rupi Kaur's work is effectively the written equivalent of vent art, even with some illustrations accompanying it, and she sells it in books because she deserves to be able to make money off of the work that she spent hours and hours creating. Her being able to make a living off of that work does not at all diminish the fact that that work was created to work through all of the trauma she was processing. And suggesting otherwise furthers a damaging narrative that the moment artists begin charging for their work, that work loses meaning. And that's just not true. Personally, I have an art journal full of vent art that I've created over the past eight or so years. 
and once it's full, I have every intention of publishing it to share a visual depiction of my journey processing and recovering from trauma, because I want to share that with others who are dealing with similar struggles. But I'd also like to make the year's worth of love, pain, passion, and effort that went into it something that is at least vaguely profitable, at least enough so to pay for production costs. And the thought that people would look at the fact that I'm selling it in book form as enough to completely diminish the significance of everything within it is incredibly disappointing, disheartening, and demoralizing. And the last thing I want is to enable or support an argument that puts other vent artists in similar positions. But anyway, in conclusion, where does that leave us in terms of whether or not vent art should be posted? As I'm sure you've guessed from all of the individual conclusions thus far, in my personal opinion, artists should always have the right to share their vent art with the world and no one should ever feel justified in suggesting otherwise, or suggesting that their sharing of it cheapens it to any degree. Vent art is so, so important. There are so many ways that both its creation and its sharing can be helpful to not only the artist creating it, but the people viewing it. And gatekeeping when it should and shouldn't be shared is just leaving perfectly valid, well-meaning artists who could benefit from letting others see it, feeling anxious and scared to do so because of fear of judgment. It's a good, exciting thing to see vent art becoming more accepted and normalized online, because it's encouraging artists who are struggling with mental illness and unhealthy coping mechanisms to express and work through those issues in a much healthier way, through art. And in sharing that art, find a community of people who understand and can support them and heal with them too. So to see the growing acceptance of it be matched by the judgment and policing of it in equal measure is incredibly disheartening. And my goal in making this video is to try to fight that policing and bring more attention to how positive of a practice it can actually be, so that even one artist can see this and feel better about posting their vent art in safe spaces they're comfortable in. I do think that if you want to take your peers' mental health into consideration, it's worth it to add trigger warnings and be respectful when it comes to where and how you post your vent art, but that's ultimately up to you. And I truly don't believe that any of the arguments I presented today should deter you from posting it at all. The absolute only time that I don't think vent art should be posted is the same instance I mentioned when I discussed it in the previous video, and that's when it depicts children in compromising situations. I understand that this vent art is created to work through the childhood traumas of the artist creating it, and I understand that it can be incredibly healing, helpful, and productive for them to make. I'm not arguing that it shouldn't be made at all. But I do think that, in my opinion, the risk of it appealing to predators and being used for subsequently horrible purposes is too high and that as a result, it should either not be posted online or shared in public spaces, or should at least only be shared in closed, safe communities with other artists and survivors who are sharing it for the sake of healing with each other and expressing their recovery journeys. That is just my opinion though, and while I stand by it passionately, I can't claim it to be anything more objective than just an opinion. But that's all from me. I'd be very interested to hear your guys' opinions on this in the comments, so long as they're shared respectfully and constructively. Because, as is often the case, I'm sure this is a topic with a lot of different perspectives and views surrounding it, and I think it's very important to encourage that open discussion and dialogue. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed today's video, or at least found something interesting or thought-provoking in it at some point. Special thank you as always to channel members Café Soleil, Joseph Solomon, Art of Amethyst Fable, and TC Pratt, as well as patrons Batman, Kyle Lowe, Blue Swanson, Unity, Cora Fear, Jamisha Walker, Elenkshi, Soul Crystal, Kim Yen, Shamil Shi, Crazy Hassar, Gentong, Jacobus Peterson, Grayson Xavier, Ty Finch 94, Milkbean, Eeyore Hee Haw, MG, Eclectrica, Blah Mage, and TC Pratt again for their support, and I'll see you in the next one.